Hello friends, Latter-day Apollos here from Teaching with Power, and my goal is to help you become a more effective and edifying teacher of the scriptures. This is insight number three for the May 6th to May 12th lesson in the Come Follow Me manual. Today I'm going to show you a way that you can teach the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead with more impact, relevancy, and power. This is going to be a bit of a shorter video because my method for teaching this story is fairly simple. But sometimes I've found that it's the simple methods that work the best. Now, I'm always trying to make the scriptures relevant to my listeners. And the sooner you can show them that the scriptures relate to their lives, the more interest and engagement you're going to have with them. So for this story, I found it effective to just start out with a choose your own relevancy activity before we even read the story. So you can start by giving them three situations and having them choose in their minds which one relates most to them by saying, Pick a situation that is most relevant to you. The three that I like to give, although you could come up with some of your own as well, are 1. You have recently lost a loved one and are struggling to come to grips with your loss. 2. There is somebody you love that has died spiritually. You are losing hope that they will ever change or return to the gospel. Or 3. You are personally going through a really rough time right now and you wonder if anybody really understands or cares about your struggles. Then say, as we read the account of the raising of Lazarus, listen with your particular situation in mind. What does the story teach you and how can it help you? Then when you're done reading or even watching a video of the story, I've done it both ways, have them share. And boy, you can get some really great, personal, insightful participation with that. Now, I believe there's a time and a place for the teacher to teach, but often we also need to create open-ended opportunities for the spirit to teach them what they most need to hear for themselves. I believe the story of the raising of Lazarus relates really well to these three situations. And let me briefly show you how, and perhaps that could help you in responding to some of the comments that might be made. Situation number one is possibly the most easily applied. This story can really bring hope to somebody who has lost a loved one. You can reassure them that Christ has power over death and that every single one of us is going to be able to experience a moment just like Mary and Martha did. They had felt the loss and the grief. But all that was removed through the power and the love of the Savior. We're also going to have a period of time when we grieve and mourn for our loved ones. There will be a time of loss, but that is temporary. Death is not the end. And one day we too will see our loved ones come forth, just like Lazarus did, and we'll rejoice with them. A great cross-reference that you could share, and one of my favorite verses of all time would be Revelation 21.4, where God says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Situation number two is also greatly relevant. Remember that every miracle Christ did was not just an act of compassion, but a teaching opportunity. Every time he healed somebody physically, he was demonstrating what he could do on a spiritual level as well. He could make the spiritually blind see, the spiritually lame walk, the spiritual leper whole. And here, one of the greatest powers of the Savior, he can raise those who are dead spiritually to life again. And so Jesus Christ has power over spiritual death. Never lose hope that people can change. Lazarus has been dead for four whole days. The Jews believe that the spirit left the body after three days. So Lazarus, uh, not to be insensitive or anything, he's not just mostly dead, he's all dead. And that's what made this miracle so amazing. He was still able to overcome death when really there was no reason to have hope. Jesus can bring back people who seem to have no hope. I know that I've seen people in my life like that. If you were to see my grandma as a young woman, you would probably say that she was spiritually dead, but she was raised from the dead. She changed. The gospel of Jesus Christ was able to bring her back to life. If you were to see a specific sister in my ward right now, just three months ago, you would probably judge her to be spiritually dead. But then something happened in her life that changed everything. And now she's been raised. She's back. She's vibrant. She's alive in the gospel. And we can probably all think of people that were spiritually dead at some point, but came back to life because of the power of Jesus Christ. Perhaps you could share an example of somebody you know that has experienced that, and maybe that person is you yourself. Now, situation number three is probably my favorite, and you might want to take them to this part yourself and show them how it can relate. Take them to verse 35 and ask, why is this verse a little surprising? Of course, verse 35 is the shortest verse of all scripture, but wow, does it ever have pages of meaning behind it. This is, this is a really great illustration of how the scriptures can teach so much with so little text. Don't, don't just gloss over it. Why is it surprising that he's weeping? Well, because he knows that he's just about to raise Lazarus from the dead. There are details earlier in the story that show us that before he ever even arrived, that that was his intention, that he was going to raise him from the dead. And he knows that in just a couple of moments, all of that pain and sorrow and mourning that everyone is experiencing is going to be transformed into joy and celebration and relief. You'd think he'd have a smile of anticipation on his face or very little concern. And yet, he weeps. And I would ask, 
Why? Why do you think he's weeping? Now listen and respond to their answers. But one thing that this teaches me, it's because he sees their pain and feels it with them. It's a perfect illustration of what Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And I would say that even though Christ knows that in the end, he's going to heal all wounds and overcome death and wipe away all tears, even with his eternal perspective, he weeps with us. He feels our sorrows. And and through the power of his atonement, he shows us perfect empathy and understanding. Jesus wept. Small verse, huge message. Now, you could also add the truth that even though you still have total faith in the resurrection, that it's okay to mourn. That doesn't show a lack of faith in the resurrection. And apparently, real men do cry. Well, that's all I have to share with you on this one. If this has helped you, I encourage you to like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. These are going to help the channel to grow and help others as well. All right, now get out there and teach with power.